Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna to talk about some family camping tips. We're heading into spring and summer. So now's the time to start thinking about getting outdoors a bit more. And I have Mary Beth joining me. So thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you for having me. So tell me about the last, maybe with the last experience you had camping with your kids and, and their ages, just to give our listeners a bit of an idea of you know, that experience and what it looked like. Yeah, sure. So last summer, uh, we spent a good, it was a long weekend and we spent a full weekend doing camping, but then also some day hikes out in the Black Hills here in South Dakota. And so that was their first, we do a lot of camping around our pier area and around Gettysburg where we live. Um, you know, a lot oftentimes with friends at different campgrounds, but this was their first experience actually staying out very far from home and then going to a trailhead and completing an entire trail. Uh, so that was their, their first big experience. Oh, good. And what does, what would you describe your camping style as for people who are listening? Cause there's so many different variations of camping. Right. So, um, single mom, so, uh, budget's always, <laughs> always yeah. a big thing uh so we we don't have extremely fancy gear and oh and by the way i have four sons the two sons that have really been uh experiencing a lot of these hiking trips and stuff with me are 12 and now eight actually my 12 year old just turned 13 to date so 13 and eight um so we're very we're very laid back we don't have a lot of fancy equipment uh, i have an old chevy truck that we drive all the way out there we haul way too much firewood way too much food bikes uh, my dog you know the whole the whole nine yards uh so we we also um i cook everything over the fire in cast iron skillets and uh kind of like how my mom and dad taught us growing up you know and we just sleep in a tent uh we're hoping to upgrade to uh, the boys having inflatable mats this summer. That's one of our goals. But what we usually use are yoga mats, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we just go out there. We're, we're very relaxed and just have fun and experience it all. I don't, I, I want them to experience the actual, you know, the roughing it part. And right. we, we like to stay pretty, pretty easy and simple and low tech. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So are these like in state parks where you have to make a reservation for the campsite or how does that work a little bit? Yeah, so South Dakota is pretty nice. They have some that are first come first serve and then they have some that you do make reservations. Uh, you know, one kind of a blessing that came out of the pandemic is people really started getting back to the camping and the outdoors part of life, which which is really good. I, I really feel like people need to get back in touch with that if that's something that they're into. Downside is you have to make reservations pretty early. So um, so yeah, it's we tend to go to uh, Custer State Park here in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of really good hiking trails. And so that's typically where I tend to gravitate towards, uh, especially with my kids. So it's just one of the state parks, you know, one of the private uh, campgrounds that are within the state park. That's nice. And that's the state park I know. Isn't it the one with all the buffalo? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So have you had encounters with buffalo at the campsite or is it kind of like different parts of the park? <laughs> that's that's really in different parts of the park. So um, fun fact, when I was married, we actually raised bison. So um, I would just probably utilize the same things that I did back then. Just, you know, make distance, get away. Don't go, go try to pet the you know bison right right exactly <laughs> don't be a stupid human and <laughs> like think they're a, a stuffed animal or something yeah, it always are... blows my mind when i see those videos too i don't know i guess maybe the same thing i was raised pre-internet pre-cell phone you you were taught to respect nature it can hurt you yeah especially i mean getting in between a mama and a baby anything is a really bad idea so um don't do that <laughs> wildlife needs to be respected and keep your distance <laughs> well now that the boys are a little bit older do you um include them in like the planning and the meals and how does what, what are some tips around that i do so uh especially this summer they are ready to go for their very first backpacking trip so that was their part of their birthday presents this year is they each got like actual backpacks that have the 
the water reservoir and, you know, the waist, waist belt so we can keep the weight off their shoulders a little bit. Um, so they're always in on, um, especially now that they'll actually be eating backpacking food, you know, I'm going to let them pick out their own meals and they're, um, I, I know what trail I want to take them on. I want to take them on little devil's tower and black elk peak trail. Um, it's a very manageable, it's about six, 0.9 or 7.2 miles, depending on which path you kind of take. Uh, so I already had that picked out because there's a couple really good spots in there to explore. And I figure over a course of three days, um, we can go slow enough without making it too hard on them. And we're going to go in June before it's too hot. But as far as like, I'm going to let them help me pick out where we set up our tent and, you know, that type of stuff. Um, when we do camping, camping, where we actually make fires, you know, they're in charge of helping me gather supplies for that, like kindling and pine needles and, and whatnot. Um, they do help with the food prep. Uh, we keep it pretty simple when we're camping, you know, um, their favorite meal every time we go in the morning is sausage and hash browns and eggs. I mean, it's like absolutely their favorite meal. So they help with that. So they they just really love being a part of that. And I also like being able to instruct them on those little things that you need to keep in mind. Like, hey, this is a good place to pitch a tent, but is it on a little bit of a hill? You know, how do you think that might feel? So uh, just giving, getting them the opportunity to kind of make some of their own decisions, but kind of coaching them along. So we're not rolling off of our sleeping bags. Yeah. <laughs> no, those are all great. So are they allowed to, do they have cell phones? I know kids younger and younger now are getting cell phones. Um, so are there kind of parameters around your tech time or how do you manage that? Um, so my um, ex-husband, uh, which is my 12 and my eight year old's dad, uh, he did purchase a cell phone for our 12 year old. Um, I typically wait till about 14 before my kids get a cell phone that's driving age here in South Dakota and they just get a simple flip phone. Um, so out when we're backpacking, camping, whatever, hiking, other than like taking pictures or recording videos, which my 13 year old loves to do, I don't really allow anything. The good thing is, is that you don't really have service out there and he's not on social media anyway, but you know, it's like, you're not going to be texting friends. You're not going to be playing games. You're not going to be doing anything else. We are being, you know, we're immersing ourselves in the outdoors for a reason. So uh, that's kind of how we do that when we're out there. So. No, that's smart. I think that's great. Cause I think even for myself, I enjoy just like disconnecting, but it's like, I think if you grew up before you, you know, the cell phones, we have a different perspective. So I always question like, you know, kids like my niece, she's never not known her parents to have a cell phone or play video games or whatever. So and it's just right. a different that's, perspective. It is. And that's one of my th favorite things about being out there is not having any service because I, I am, you know, I always have my cell phone and then I also have my work cell phone because of my job. And, and I have a lot of people that lean on me for support or advice or information or whatever. And when I get to go out there, whether I'm solo or I'm with my kids, it's like, I don't have to respond to anything. And it is so nice. I can give my kids hundred percent of my attention. Um, and I, I try very hard to do that at home, but the reality of the world right. that we live in, that's just not always possible. So out there, I can give that to them all the time. And I always just like break a little bit inside when I start coming back towards, you know, <laughs> yeah. civilization and I start, my phone starts blowing up and I'm like, oh, can I just go back? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I agree. Um, I think South Dakota is a fabulous place for families to explore. And it's kind of one of those hidden states a little bit. It doesn't quite get the attention as some of the coast or New England or other areas. Um, how many days do you think a family could spend exploring South Dakota? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I have been backpacking just myself. I have been backpacking in South Dakota like consistently since 2019 and I was kind of figuring up how many miles I've hiked here just in South Dakota and it's probably around 200 and 250 miles and I haven't even touched a lot of what is out there so and I definitely haven't stayed at all the campgrounds and there's a lot of campgrounds um that have a lot of fun things to do they have you know 
um, activities. They have a lot of hiking trails around them. We have horseback riding. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so much to do here. And I, I do agree that South Dakota is kind of the that hidden gem as far as outdoor activities. So a family could easily come out here for a week or two and not run out of things to do. Um, because there's also a lot of touristy things that you can do as well. There's reptile gardens and there's bear country and, you know, all these caves and, and experiences like that. But if you were just going to strictly like go to the lakes, go kayaking, go paddle, um, take a paddle boat, uh, go canoeing, go fishing, whatever, there is so much to do out here, uh, that you really don't have to tap into a lot of those touristy type places. If you strictly just want the outdoor experience. Right. And I also think people, there's a lot of different kind of like na nature settings. There's the forest and then you've kind of got the badlands and you've got, so there's different just nature type landscapes that vary. It, yeah, exactly. I have not got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's, there are times and if people, you know, find me on some of my social media, they can see pictures from that are just crazy granite form formations absolutely gorgeous there's then there's lush forests you have tons of lakes and ponds out there tons of creeks and streams um also i mean on one trail alone i have walked through granite peaks and formations and stuff through a forest trail across little bridges through a cow pasture you know, all in one trail. So it's like you get such a variety that, you know, you're just really not going to get bored. If you have a true appreciation for the environment around you, you're not going to run out of things to look at. And there's been times that I've taken the same trail. Um, well, for example, the one that I took my kids on, which is Spring Creek Plume Loop um, Trail. That was the third time I'd taken that trail. And my boys are the ones that found this little cubby hole pond thing that I, I had walked by oh, wow. two other times and I didn't even notice it was there. And we spent over an hour just playing in that water, exploring that area. And so, I mean, every time I've even repeated a trail, I find new things about it. So, I mean, that's just the cool thing about going out there, especially if you're going to go out there at different times of the year it changes so much yeah that's, that's a, another thing i was just thinking of and you have areas of dark sky too i think you get away from the lights just to observe the night sky i don't know i've been hearing reports of the northern lights the last few days and i'm sure they've been areas of south dakota if it was clear you could probably have witnessed that yeah uh that night <laughs> i was like internally fighting because i was working with my uh 13 year old on homework, my eight year old's in bed. So I couldn't just drive north of town and watch. But yeah, I have countless friends that took some of the most amazing pictures just with their cell phones. Oh. Um, out in the Black Hills is the Badlands. And that doesn't have the trees. You know, if you don't know what the Badlands are, definitely look them up. But some of those pictures of the Northern Lights over the Badlands was, I mean, it's just mind blowing. It doesn't even seem real that that could be here. But it, it's gorgeous. And, you know, that's a perfect place to go out and just explore on one of those trips out here. Yeah, I think so too. And I think we're in the midst of a really active year for solar flares and activity. So it is, it's like when you start seeing the pictures that people are getting with their cell phones now, I mean, it's just mind blowing the colors and you don't have to go to Iceland or Alaska. It's just it's dipping down. You just have to be aware and, and be out there. I just, I think seeing the, a few times too, when I get away from the city, just observing the sky, we forget how many, how much we can see of the sky when we're away from the light. Yeah, I think so too. You know, we're really blessed out here with most of South Dakota being very rural. Um, so I can go two blocks over and there's hardly any town lights. Um, and so we can see the sky pretty much all the time here. Uh, and I, I kind of remind my boys sometimes, like, you know how, how blessed we are to be able to sit here over this lake, yeah, sitting in the middle of pine trees on a couple logs with our dog, you know, and just watching the sun go down and seeing all those colors change. And then all of a sudden, yeah, looking up and seeing stars. And I, I always remind them, you know, because this has been their life forever. But I'm always like, you guys, like, 
this is not what everyone else gets to experience. You know, this is an amazing opportunity to see things that some people just never get to, you know? Right, exactly. So what are some tips for budget travel? I know, I think this year too, with everything is getting more expensive and oftentimes, you know, families do think like, oh, it's so expensive to take time away. But I think, I don't know, I, I've been thankful that my parents too, we were always living next to the, next to, you know, counting pennies and saving up and not maybe getting as many birthday gifts, but to take a little weekend away just is worth it so much. So what are some tips you have? I agree. So um, one thing that I do leading up to our camping season, because that is our biggest thing that we get excited about is, uh, so you kind of brought it up, birthday gifts. I don't do a lot for my kids on birthday or Christmas. Uh, I decided shortly after my divorce that experiences were going to be my main focus. And so uh, we really prioritize time together, time with my older two sons and time outside. So the great thing about camping is it is fairly cheap. Once you have your stuff, it is fairly cheap. So um, I can spend 35 to 40 bucks on a campsite, you know, and way cheaper than staying in a hotel room. Oh, yeah. Uh, I also... I learned how to prepare food over an open fire, uh, which is super awesome when you don't have a burn ban, which we should be good this year in South Dakota. <laughs> We've had enough blizzards. I think we're okay. Um, so I did just familiarize myself with, uh, you know, learning how to cook over an open fire. I have cast iron skillets. You can get those at even Walmart. Oh yeah. Um, and I think a lot of um, secondhand places you can usually find cast iron too. Uh, so just kind of take the time to learn how to do that. And because uh, you can make so many meals and there's actual cookbooks out there, how to make easy camping meals. So I would just take the time to learn some of those experiences. You don't need a big fancy grill. Um, by the time I load up all the stuff that I already have anyway, I wouldn't have room for a grill. Um, right. Oh, that's so true. <laughs> um, if you have access, well, and even on Facebook, there's a lot of great uh, secondhand camping uh, sites, things like that. Uh, look at the end of this of the winter season or the summer season for deals on tents, um, Menards, Walmart even has some pretty decent tents. You don't have to spend a fortune on them. Um, the one thing I will say is uh, invest in waterproofing spray. Even if the tent says it's waterproof, just grab a can and spray it down because <laughs> my kids laugh about how good we are at getting caught in rain showers. Oh, no. so it's really nice having an extra waterproof tent. <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely. Right. And uh, Walmart Menards, they also have, you know, really decent sleeping bags. You're, you know, unless you're going to be getting really serious and going out there where it's 20 degrees or zero degrees, you can just get a regular sleeping bag from Walmart if you're doing camping. Um, this year when we dive into the actual backpacking world, I'm going to probably have to get some more squishable, packable sleeping bags for my kiddos uh, to save on weight for them. My sleeping bag's horribly heavy. It's five pounds, but I don't care. I love it. Uh, but I don't want that for my kids. So, um, but if you're just doing camping, you're going out there, you're driving to where you're going to be sleeping, you know, it's fine to go to Walmart or Menards or whatever type of home goods store that you have and just get what they have on hand. It does not have to be crazy. Uh, right. we also bring a lot of extra blankets just in case, I mean, being cold is no fun. Um, Again, a lot of those are just old blankets that we've had forever. I'm trying to think of what else. Everything I do is so cheap, but I realize that a lot of people don't think that way. Um, no, I, I totally think that way. I always tell people too. I mean, look at um, the secondhand stores too, because it's amazing to me sometimes what shows up there. People literally get things. Unfortunately, if they're moving, things like camping equipment may not have gotten used that much. And if you just look it over good, you can get some great stuff even at the local thrift stores. Right. My uh, my eight-year-old's backpacking backpack that I just bought him, I got off of eBay. It was used, um, but it was I only like, eBay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was only 25 bucks and it's perfect size for him uh, because everything that I was finding on Amazon was just so crazy expensive. And I'm like, okay, he's eight and he's growing like crazy. I'm not spending 
80 to $120 on this ridiculous backpack that he's not going to be able to use in a few years. So um, I've also seen that Walmart runnings, we have runnings, I don't know if other places do, but uh, places like that have decent backpacks as well. So if you are going to have your kids like, oh, I don't want them to take my their expensive luggage, right. um, just grab a cheap backpack and take that along. Um yeah, we just keep things so simple. Uh, you can get firewood pretty cheaply at a lot of convenience stores. Uh, we do that a lot if we don't have a bunch on hand that we've gotten from people. Um, we just keep things simple. No, I think that's important. Just like you mentioned, learn learn how to cook over an open fire. I think it's the experience is so incredible. And the food is actually, you know, if you've had stuff that cooked in an iron skillet, it's so good. So <laughs> it is. My kids get so excited when we <laughs> when we're getting out there. In fact, when I told them we were going backpacking, my youngest is like, Well, do we still get sausage and hash browns? And I'm <laughs> like, buddy, I am not carrying my cast iron skillets out there. So no, not that trip. We are yeah, not doing exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you want to lug the cast iron. I mean, the skillet alone is probably five to eight pounds. Exactly. So I think, you know, just don't get too caught up in gizmos and gadgets. Um, I actually have one item that I will send you a link to that I do highly recommend on Amazon. Um, and it is an inflatable, collapsible, um, solar powered lantern. Oh, wow. And this thing absolutely love it not only is it phenomenal because it packs it's very small i take it everywhere i take it backpacking and camping but it also has a charging cord so you can if you got in a pinch you could charge your phone or something with it um so i will put i will yeah say let's yeah because that thing is worth i think it's only like 25 or 30 bucks but honestly it i would pay 40 for it um I actually left mine at the last campsite that we stayed at and I think I cried, but oh, yeah, I would too. <laughs> definitely getting another one. Other than that, we just, we just don't take much. I mean, we take our sleeping stuff, um, take extra socks just in case your kid's socks get wet. Make sure you have a pair of shoes, uh, again, back to getting caught in rain. Uh, we did do the old fashioned wrap your socks in, uh, plastic bags. Oh Yeah on our last day because all the shoes were soaked they only had one dry pair of socks and so I was like well until we get home we're wrapping your feet in you know the socks in yeah. plastic bags so that's probably the only thing I would bring extra of yeah and the extra plastic bags you can always have something to put in the plastic bags you know whether it's right. dirty clothes something gets wet right and that yeah. waterproofing spray too I always recommend like if you have a pair of hiking boots I'm always putting a new coat of um, the waterproof spray on, even if the boots say they're waterproof, it just helps. It's another layer. Try to keep your feet dry. And Yes, absolutely. And yeah. eBay is a great place even for finding like good hiking boots, you know, do some research maybe online or go try the shoes or boots on at a store and walk around, see which ones fit. But then honestly, I've gotten hiking boots like a third of the price on eBay. Exactly. You know, yeah, so they're yeah. last year's colors. Nobody's going to care that there's last year's colors. Right. If you're doing it right and you get dirty enough, no one's going to be able to tell anyway. Yeah, exactly. And you can probably <laughs> find better colors because, you know, who cares what color? Go online and find it. Yeah, eBay is my friend. I'm a big proponent of eBay. I mean, and Walmart. I do have a lot of good deals that if you know where to, when to look and just look through the sales. and. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, I... We don't even have inflatable pads yet. I do because I'm old, just saying it. <laughs> and I sleep like a rotisserie chicken, so I love my inflatable pad, but we are hoping to upgrade on the boys. But honestly, what we're using right now, plus they're super tiny, um, is we have these, you know, $8 yoga mats. So if you want to have a little bit of cushion, but you don't want to break the bank with, you know, a mat yet, you know, just try a yoga mat. They are not that expensive, super easy to roll them up. They have so many purposes. I know we were completely soaked one day. Our picnic table was soaked, whatever. And I just rolled it out and set it on the table or on the seat of the picnic table. And that's where we, you know, we, we had a dry place to sit. So right. oh, that's smart. Yeah. You're helpful. Right. Yeah. Oh, good stuff. Lots of good stuff. So if people want to reach out to you and ask you some more questions about camping or some of these 
great recipes and whatnot. Where should they find you, Mary Beth? Uh, so I do have a Facebook. It is Mary Beth Holsworth, H-O-L-Z as in zebra, W-A-R-T-H. Uh, you can shoot me a message and I'm always happy to talk about it. Uh, I do have an Instagram that I'm trying to be a little more active on. <clears throat> it's long. It's a long word, but it's Lizzie, common spelling, L-A-S as in Sam, A-I-R, F as in Frank, H-I-O-N-A. Um and that's on Instagram. And then I have a YouTube that does have some of my hiking blogs on it, a little bit of other stuff uh, with like my coffee business. That's Mary Beth Holsworth, 9262. And then I have a lot of camping, hiking, whatever, random fun on my TikTok, which is another crazy one. Thanks to my kids. Uh, Lizzie, common spelling, Mick Shizzy, M-C-S-H-I-Z-Z-Y. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I love that. <laughs> that they've gotten you onto TikTok with ideas and fun. And yeah, and yeah. camping should be fun. Getting outside should be fun. And I don't think any, I love how you just made it super accessible. Just, I encourage everyone to, to just get out there and try it. And it's the memories that you make. Honestly, that's what I think back on my childhood. It, I don't remember half the gifts I got, but the trip where we're splitting the malt in South Dakota that was so huge. My dad ended up having to eat it all. I mean, those are the memories that stick with me now, you know, 30 years later. I mean, so it's really something. And I think said. one thing when I, when I hear people talk about bad camping experiences, um, you know, that don't involve maybe your tent fell in from torrential <laughs> rain or something. Um, you know, so one thing that I think parents, we typically stress out because we feel like we have to plan so much and, that is the one time that I try not to plan anything because I have to plan because of my work, because of, you know, just various things. Like I have to plan so many hours of every single day, you know, and, and there's just no room for spontaneity until we get out camping. So even though like we may plan on going on this hike or whatever, or I want to take them to this lake if there is a moment where my kids just are having more fun doing this one thing than maybe what I thought we could do you got to let it go and and there's times that just having fun and exploring around your campground with just those little things your kids are going to value so much more than trying to pack all this stuff into a short amount of time you're stressed because you're not staying on top of a time schedule. They're stressed because you're stressed and they feed <laughs> off of us. Like just go out there and enjoy all those little things. We have more fun collecting rocks than we do anything else. So just relax. Like don't try to plan everything out. I think that's the most important thing. Cause like you said, that's, that's the stuff that sticks with kids. Yeah. Great words to end on, Mary Beth. Thank you so much for your time. This was a lot of fun. I'm going to go check out your Instagram now. <laughs> yeah, well, and we'll drop you. a bunch of the notes in the in the chat section and write it up so you can check out her photos as well. I'm excited to see them. Thanks, Mary yeah. Beth. Thank you.